Hello boys and girls, welcome to a video on Term 3 Revision and we're going to try to get this video done in under 30 minutes, okay? So, let's get into it. The topics we need to focus on here are electrical energy, or is electrical energy, simple circuits, which are the series circuits, right, that we were busy with in the term, and then we have conductors and insulators, we have electricity generation in power stations, and then finally we have renewable energy energies which is the last topic so let's start with electrical energy so electrical energy is the is generated by the movement of electrons between atoms now before you can understand a single word of that definition you need to understand what it, an atom is and what where an electron plays part in that atom so at the bottom here we have a single atom now, atoms are extremely tiny, which you know by now, right? So you can never see them. So what we do know or what we have uh, theorized or what we've gotten very close is how an atom or is what we think it would look like. And atoms have a nucleus. It's the middle section here that has protons and neutrons, right? Neutrons have no charge. A proton has a positive charge shown with the plus sign. And then... On the outside the, of the atom in the electron cloud or the orbital clouds, we have our stars of the show, these electrons. And in when we talk about electrical energy, the only things that move are the electrons themselves and never the nucleus with the protons and, and, protons and the neutrons. And if you are interested, which I'm sure you are, this uh, particular atom is that of a lithium or the lithium element. So, so it's a lithium atom, and I know that because lithium has three electrons and three protons. Uh, and lithium, by the way, is, uh, is popular in making of batteries because it's great for actually creating that electric potential that we need for to create an electric current. All right, so let's move on from here. So there are two forms of electrical energy. There is static electrical energy which is created by friction when two objects rub together and it's the perfect type of energy especially if you're trying to annoy your friend or your sister with a tidy painful shock or if you're wanting your hairs to stand on edge and really go for that iconic Boris Johnson hairstyle and then we have on the right here we have electric current which is when the electrons flow from one point to another and uh, that's created when we have an electric potential which is voltage but more on that later so let's let's take uh, another look at static in more detail this time so static electrical energy is created when electrons are pulled away from their atoms through the friction of two or more objects so when two or more objects rub each other there's going to be some electrons that are taken you know that's what it is and you can see that in this image right so we have a balloon right made from a rubber like material and then we have a woolen jersey and what happens in this image or this case where the balloon rubs against the jersey the balloon actually takes the electrons from the jersey uh, leaving this section of the jersey positively charged and that section of the balloon negatively charged. Now, what does it mean when I say positively charged? Does it mean that all these atoms and electrons were pulled by the balloon? Um, well, no, that's not what it means. What it means is that, uh, let's take, if you take lithium, for example, it has three, it has three electrons, right? Even if I take one of those electrons away, that means it has more protons than it has electrons, which means that its overall charge will then be positive. In the same way that this woolen jersey, there could be, each atom could, for example, have 40 electrons. Only one of those electrons needs to be removed from an atom for it to become positive. So uh, not all these electrons are taken. Of course, there are still electrons. It's actually impossible to take all the electrons from an atom, right, as far as we know. And so this balloon only gained some more electrons than it had before but because of it gaining more electrons than it had it means that it has more electrons than it started it had to begin with 
leaving it with a negative charge because it has more negatives now than it has positives, which means its overall charge is negative, just like the jersey's overall charge is positive, right? So I wanted you to take out of your mind that that all the electrons are taken away. That's not possible. It's just one, uh, you know, one from an atom. And because there's trillions of atoms, we're talking about trillions of electrons, but just, um, yeah, don't think of it on like a large scale. Anyway, enough of that, but just know it's, it's some electrons, right? And not all of them, right? Moving on. Static electricity. Uh, if we look in this image here, uh, we see that a, the negative charge is attracted to a positive charge. So negative charges in the balloon attract the positive charges on the wall. So these two objects will be attracted to each other. They won't want to pull towards each other. And on the other side of it, we have like charges, so positive, positive, and like charges will repel each other. And that is the laws of charges, the law of charges. Same charges repel, opposite charges attract. Right. Easy. Let's move on to the next one. So then we have electrical current. So electrical current is generated by the by flowing of electrons. So when electrons are to flow, we have electrical current. Whereas in static, they do not they do not flow, and that's why we say they are static, which means not moving. Uh, current needs uh, so electrical current needs an electric potential, which is a voltage before it can work. So there needs to be a pushing force to get these electrons going. Otherwise, they're not going anywhere. Right, so then we have, on the left here, we have a circuit. And this circuit is closed, which means a current can flow. The source of the potential, the uh, voltage, is this battery over here. So it provides that push, and the electrons will flow from the negative terminal of the battery all the way through the circuit into the light bulb filaments. You know, the friction will cause it to heat up and glow. Then they'll come around through the switch. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's my electron sound. All right, and then back to the battery, and then through again, and then over and over again, they'll repeat until the battery runs out of pushing juice. So until the battery can no longer provide a voltage. Uh, and this, by the way, this flow is the movement of the electrons, uh, but the electric current would then flow in the opposite direction because current refers to positive charge flow and not the negative charge flow All right so the electrons flow from negative to positive but the current is said to flow from positive to negative even though technically currents i mean positive charges cannot flow since you know protons cannot move from the neutrons it's just how we think of it it's really to do with perspective but i don't want you to rack your brain on that let's move on so we have uh, so we have here another example of, um, you know, uh, electric potential created, and then that creates a current. So, uh, example, if you look at clouds and how lightning is formed, we have negative charges. Uh, ooh, that's red. I don't want that, right? We have negative charges forming on the ground, and we have positive charges forming here at the top of the cloud. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I'm going ahead of myself. Let's look at another example. Um, something that is intuitive, like something that you would think is happening, or like w w what happens, uh, you know, according to your perception. So if you look at, you have this negative charges forming on the cloud and positive charges forming on the ground, and when there's enough, uh, you know, of that difference, when there's enough difference in the charges, it creates so much electric potential, so much voltage, that a current can form, sending these electrons kilometers from the ground, moving all the way into the ground to close that or to basically create that pathway, that electric current. So the, the negative charges are attracted to the positive charges and that creates an electric current from the cloud to the ground. And that's how lightning works. In a similar fashion, uh, lightning can also uh, work within the clouds or between the clouds from negative to positive charges. And very interestingly, um, lightning can even go from the ground to the cloud, so, uh, which is something that's counterintuitive, something that you wouldn't think is happening, but a lightning bolt can actually start from the ground, so electrons can flow from the ground into the clouds. And that's not something you would think is possible, but it's a negative charge, so it's static is forming on the ground uh, and then being attracted to the cloud. So lightning can actually come from the ground or from the sky, both ways, which is very interesting. All right, and we have simple circuits, right? So 
Let me just make that. Oh, okay, well, I'm sure you can read that. So simple circuits are electrical pathways with at least one energy source over here, a pathway over here, the wire, uh, a switch, ta-da, and an output device, uh, this star over here, the light bulb. And that's what a simple circuit is. And we do series and series circuits, which means that it only has one path to follow, right? It does a loop, basically. And that's what we were learning this year. There's also parallel circuits, which has more than one way to travel, one pathway to travel, but you'll learn about that next year. All right. So, um, yeah. So when we, this is how it would look in, or in a more realistic way. So this is a more realistic portray, portrayal of uh, electric circuit. But when we talk about circuit diagrams, we have to draw them using symbols. And the symbols, I'm not covering in the video, that's in your notes. I suggest that you get very familiar with them. So I'm going to show you an electric uh, circuit diagram. Um, of course, I won't be doing it completely, completely accurately because I need to use a ruler, but I'm not going to. But I expect you to do it inside your test and in your book. All right, so let's start with the battery. Right, that's how you usually start. It's uh, really up to you what you want to start with. There is my battery. Apparently, it's a battery. So a battery is two or more cells. All right, it looks like a cell, but it might be a battery. It says they're battery, so I'm going to do a battery. And then we go with a wire connecting to the battery. Then I'm going to do my switch. It's a closed switch, so I need to draw a closed switch. Then it goes down, and then I have my light bulb. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you put it, but I'm going to put mine over here. All right, even though it looks like it's next to the switch, I, I'm going to draw it over here. All right, and there we go. There's a very badly drawn electric uh, circuit diagram. But the symbols are correct, right? And that's also very important. But of course, with the wire, you would need to, to get it straight, you would need to use a ruler. All right, let's move on. And we've got, we have conductors and insulators, right? So. I'm going to draw the pluses really quickly. Right, that these represent my nucleus with the protons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some elevated music for you. Alright. Okay, there we go. There's our protons, and then we have our electrons, right? Our negative E's. Doop, doop. You know, instead of E's, you can always just put negative charges like this. I mean, because that's what they are. Right, that's that's what electrons are. They're negative charges. All right, so in conductors, right, the current or electrical current is allowed to easily flow, flow through. And this is because in conductors like metals, for example, metals are excellent conductors of electricity, they have free, free, free flowing electrons. The electrons are not attached to a single atom. They actually move around by themselves all the time. So whether or not there's electric pressure, those electrons are basically jumping between atom, but not in any direction, just going backwards and forwards or you know side to side, not moving from one point to another, just you know, living a free electron life, I suppose. Then when we apply an electric pressure, we give it a direction right, we apply that pressure to it, we, uh, that voltage, we push the electrons in a direction, so that creates a current. And because they're easy, they're free to move from one atom to the other, it allows a current to easily flow through that material. In contrast, the insulators restrict or resist the flow of an electric current through it, and this is because they just do not want those electrons to leave their atoms, right? They hold on to the electrons for dear life. They don't want to share nothing. Those electrons are living a cage life in that material. There is no free movement of those electrons. So even if I try to push them with a uh, electric current, or sorry, electric pressure, electric vo uh, potential voltage, nothing's going to happen. Those electrons are still not going to move. Nada. Zip. Right, no movement of these electrons. Um, I can just keep pushing, and what will happen is I'll just keep building more and more, you know, electrons or more and more electric potential will build until I'm literally forcing those electrons through, destroying the bonds between the atoms, and actually causing material to burn. 
which does happen if you apply a high voltage uh, you know, inside of an insulator, it actually can catch on fire, especially if it's also a fuel like wood or paper. If it's glass, I mean, it will just melt. It will just get hot and melt, but yeah. And that's actually not what you want from a, a, a conductor or pathway. You want it to just easily allow, you know, current to flow through without, you know, melting or catching on fire. All right, then we have electric electricity generation in power plants. So a power plant is basically like a giant building sized engine in an engine with the purpose of generating electricity. So in a coal power station, right, or power station runs on fossil fuels, right, because there's some power stations that run on nuclear energy or renewable energy sources um, too, but in this case, we're focusing on coal power stations. In these ones, the idea is that we put, we put coal in and we get electricity out. That's the basic idea. That sums it up. That's kind of what we want, right? Coal in, electricity out. But it's not that simple. There's obviously a whole process uh, that happens. So let's take a look at that. Oh, oh, silly me, I forgot. Uh, coal is a fossil fuel, which means that it was made by very prehistoric creatures, actually uh, like dinosaurs. So we thank you, Mr. Dinosaur, for that contribution. Actually, wrong. Because if you were listening, class, you know that coal is not made of dinosaurs it is not made of fossils at all. Fossil fuels are actually made from plants mostly, and they are, were the remains of plants mostly from 300 to 400 million years ago. So thanks a lot, dinosaur, but thanks for nothing. Right, so it's actually plants that are the MVPs of our planet. You know, they just give us so much and we give them so little. We don't deserve them. Anyway, let's move on, because uh, I digress. So. Inside power stations, we have, we skip step one, which is the mining, step two, which is the transport. We have the coal here. We crush the coal so it's easy to burn. And I'm going to focus here, because you by now know the steps from last year. So I'm going to focus on the energy change and transfer in the system. So here we have the coal, the chemical energy inside of that coal, rich in chemical energy, is then turned into thermal energy when it's burnt. So... Here we have a thermal, you know, thermal energy, right, from chemical uh, then to thermal. And then from thermal, we boil that thermal energy used to boil water to create steam. And the steam has a lot of, you guessed it, kinetic, kinetic energy. And that kinetic energy, that linear, meaning straight line kinetic energy, is used to do uh, to turn blades, which creates rotational kinetic energy. So it does the straight kinetic energy into spinning or rotational kinetic energy. Uh, and this is all to turn a shaft through a the generator, uh, which is where the magic happens, which the generator turns kinetic energy into electrical. Electrical energy and that's actually what we really want this whole time you know if we could just skip all this other you know nonsense over here and just go straight to making electricity we would but no man alive uh, not even hulk would uh, be happy spinning a shaft through a generator for 24 hours seven days a week that's literally impossible you know, living things need to eat. So instead we use non-living things to do the work for us, you know, by using energy transfer and change. Go us. All right, then we'll do, we're looking, we're looking at, lastly, renewable energies. And there's not much to say. I mean, there's, there's obviously a lot to say, but there's not much you need to know. Uh, what you do need to know is that solar energy makes use of the sunlight, the solar power of the sun, uh, you know, solar panels, you know, that's how it harnesses it. Biomass or biofuel is using, uh, you know, the remains of living things like leaves or, you know, dead plants. You burn that, uh, similar to fossil fuels, and you get uh, heat, which you then use to do the whole process that we spoke about earlier. And then we have wind, where we cut out the burning part and we just go straight to the, th the kinetic energy of the wind causing the fans to turn. And there's a generator on the other side of this thing, 
you know, that creates electricity. And then we have geothermal, which is probably one of my favorite, but also the most rare type because geothermal relies on, um, you know, hot spots in Earth's crust where we can utilize the heat from within the Earth to boil the water instead of burning coal, right? So it's absolutely clean. It doesn't create any uh, type of pollution or, you know, byproduct like carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. It just does the whole steam thing. It just releases steam because it's heat from the earth. So, you know, that's already being released anyway. If there is gases, it's nothing that we're doing. All right. And then we have hydropower, which is, you know, the, the kinetic energy of moving water that's turning the turbines and not, again, burning something. So these are renewable energies. And what you need to need to consider is think to yourself like, you know, what kind of renewable energy is good where, you know, what's the weaknesses, you know, shortfalls, like solar, you need obviously the sun, so you wouldn't build in a cloudy place. Hydro, obviously you wouldn't build in a desert, right? Biomass, I mean, it still causes pollution, you're burning stuff. Wind, you wouldn't build it in a place where, or a country where there's no wind. And geothermal, like I said, you need like a, a hot spot where the magma is very close to the crust. So there's that. All right, and so I hope that you found that useful, and good luck. See you in the next video.